In our dangerous world, a long dead vice president has much to teach us. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Unless you're into history, no one today knows of Henry A. Wallace, who was vice president under Franklin Roosevelt from 1941 to 1945. But especially today, as Putin gains in his war of conquest against the democracy of Ukraine, as China moves to control critical global waterways and to retake Taiwan, as the Iranian Ayatollahs gain hegemic control of the oil-rich Middle East and undermine the very existence of Israel, and as President Biden fecklessly moves to cut defense spending, Wallace's political career screams sobering warnings of impending perils. All this is clear from reading a new first-rate biography by Ben Steele, The World That Wasn't, Henry Wallace and the Fate of the American Century. Iowa-born Wallace came from a prestigious farming family. His father served as Secretary of Agriculture under Presidents Harding and Coolidge in the early 1920s. Wallace himself was a brilliant plant and animal geneticist whose pioneering work contributed enormously to reducing world hunger. But his political career was a disaster that came breathlessly close to undermining the free world after the close of World War II. We have much to learn from this near catastrophe. Franklin Roosevelt made Wallace Secretary of Agriculture when he took office in 1933 and picked him as his vice presidential running mate when he ran for an unprecedented third term in 1940. When it came to the Soviet Union, Wallace was amazingly naive. During the war, for example, he spent several weeks visiting Siberia, home to Joseph Stalin's Gulag, a vast network of concentration camps for millions of Stalin's political prisoners. Incredibly, Stalin's secret police constructed fake villages and facilities where political prisoners are dressed up as hardy, happy pioneers and secret police agents pretended to be progressive reformers hard at work to better crop yields. Wallace was completely taken in. In the election year of 1944, key Democratic Party leaders sensed FDR could not survive another term and wanted to replace the mercurial Wallace. But the Veep was beloved by the party's powerful left. At the convention, it took quick, improvised work one critical evening by the convention chairman to prevent a Wallace stampede. Harry Truman was ultimately picked. If the Wallace forces had prevailed, Wallace would have become president when Roosevelt died a few months later. Unlike Truman, Wallace would have been passive in the face of Stalin's ambitions to dominate the world. With Wallace, there would have been no Marshall Plan, which was critical in saving European countries from communist takeovers. No NATO, which stopped the Red Army from marching into Western Europe. Wallace would have stood by as Stalin seized all of Germany instead of the far smaller peace he ended up with. Without our help, communist forces would have won the Greek Civil War. Stalin would have taken control of eastern Turkey, the Dardanelles, northern Iran, the Japanese island of Hokkaido, and the entire country of Korea. Japan would have been neutralized instead of becoming a crucial U.S. ally in the Cold War. U.S. forces would have been withdrawn from Asia and Europe. In short, the U.S. would have been in a dangerously weak position by the time a new president would have taken over in 1949. Wallace ended up running an independent presidential campaign in 1948. The author documents how, astonishingly, Wallace worked closely with Soviet diplomats to try to meet with Stalin and to gain Stalin's approval for a big public statement Wallace wanted to make on U.S.-Soviet relations. As president, Wallace's likely appointments to head up the state and defense departments were both Soviet agents. Such a world would have been infinitely poorer and far less free than it is today. The Wallace story is a warning to Biden and his team, not to mention isolationist-minded Republicans and Democrats. Desiring peace is no policy, only a wish. It is another word for appeasement. With Wallace-like obstinacy, Biden continues to be weak in the face of the growing menace from China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. It would be a tragedy of the highest order for humanity 
if, having barely escaped one awful world 80 years ago, we blunder into another today. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.